Good morning. What a wonderful crowd and I'm so happy to be back. Um, let's everybody go ahead and let's stand and let's do our welcoming song. Hit it, Kevin. T today. There we go. Bull had a dream. Nothing is impossible. Imagine if a man took wing, nothing is impossible. People laughed, it can't be done. Man's not meant to fly. Their little dream changed everything. They dared to touch the sky. Nothing is impossible. When you blow by every obstacle and move like you're unstoppable. That was pretty good. I think we got more on this bright sunny day. There's a place inside of you where nothing is impossible. Oh, the great things you will do. Cause nothing is impossible. You were born into this world with everything you need. Hold on to your hearts, the magic starts the moment you believe. Nothing is impossible. Dreams are made to fly when you blow by every obstacle and move shout it out better we got more though impossible you were born to shine when you blow by every obstacle and like you mean it. Nothing is impossible. Whoa, my goodness, that is a beautiful song. It is so, so true. And thank you, Julie. You guys, we need somebody that can do that. We've already established, I can't even clap and sing. So Linda, Linda, would you get on that for us? <laughs> Will you get that bongo going? Is that a bongo drum? It's a conga. Oh, gosh, darn it. I had the N and the G in there. Anyway, um, let us be about our business and let's go ahead and move on. Let's do our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. It's, will we turn Patty's mic off? No. <laughs> Okay, remember, remember a few weeks ago, right? What Joanne said, right? Yeah, right, let's do it. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. Take every one of those phrases, right? Woo, that is powerful. Thank you, all right. Here's our affirmation and let's say it with feeling, right? Thank you. All right, ready? Thank you, God, that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation, we at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live the teaching of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. And let's um, do our prayer request. And again, please, just a first name um, and what you would uh, pray for healing, 
whatever it might be. So, big, big prayer, sure. Oh, okay. Russ. I had one once for less than 24 hours. Oops, no, kidding. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. You know, it's important, right? It, it, it lifts us all up, gives us stuff to talk about, right? So it's all good. Okay. All right. Let's take a moment. Let's take a breath and let's calm our souls. Let's maybe even hold our hearts. Dear God, we ask you for healing for Richard and Virginia, Sandy and Ken, not only for those folks, but for the medical team that is working with them. We also place, uh, we also pray for Sandra and um, not for the DUI, but that she learns and she moves forward from it. Nick, that he stays safe on the motorcycle. The box that they can bring it home again. In Buffalo, New York, the victims and those families, my goodness, turned upside down. Let us pray for healing and peace in all those hearts. In the Ukraine, again, peace, in all of their hearts and all of their lives. And let's play, pray for Putin, that he can settle down, that he can find peace in his heart. For these prayers, we ask your goodness. Amen. God. And who is reading the daily word today? Oh, Susan, she'll be right up here. Right here. Susan. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Today is Sunday, May 15th. Freedom. Taking responsibility for my life leads me to freedom. Each life has its share of ups and downs. Like most people, I have been felt blessed by my happy experiences and laid low by my more difficult ones. I have used the spiritual tools of forgiveness and gratitude to learn from and move beyond my more painful experiences. A kind of spiritual housekeeping is my key to lasting freedom. By releasing blame and regret, over and over again, if necessary, I am ensuring that I will not be bound by the past and limited by the outworn image of myself. Life is dynamic, and so am I. My growth is dependent upon my forward movement, and I commit to embracing the freedom that comes from leaving the past behind. With gratitude, I bless the person I was. With faith, I reach unencumbered for the person I am becoming. For you were all called to freedom, brothers and sisters, Galatians 15, 13, 5, 13, rather. Let's go ahead and bring Julie up. Doug wasn't able to be with us today. I think we should 
um, it's for safe travels for Doug. That's what I heard. Yes. So welcome, Julie, please. And Linda today. Yay. <laughs> and my mother, Linda, is here too, just to confuse things. Come on up, mom. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a slow song, maybe use it meditatively, and if you know it, you're welcome to sing along. It's an old uh, unity song, I think it's unity from, by Ron and Carol Harris. I'm going to start it off, and then Linda will join me, and you can join at that time, too. In this fairy room. There's quite enough love for one like me. And in this fairy room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any gloom. For Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's in this very room. In this very room. There's quite enough love for all of us. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for all of us. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any gloom. For oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus. Is in this very room quite enough hope, quite enough power to chase away any gloom for Jesus, Lord Jesus. Is in this very room. Beautiful. Yeah, we got it. All right, thank you. Um, let's welcome back Reverend Patty Pippi. It's been a while. She's come back from her shoulder uh, work there. So welcome, Patty. Thank wow. you. Thank you. It's great to be back. You know, um, it's it's good to be back. And I'm sorry I missed Easter Sunday. That's my favorite day to preach, you know. And um, I had, yeah, I just told Kevin, I said, you know, it's the pain in the shoulder was a little more than I can handle because I just got back to work. And then to drive by myself, I didn't want to do that because my buddy that usually comes with me, with me, Roxy, she moved to Seattle to be with her son. So, you know, nice time for her to leave, right? <laughs> but um, message first, right? Then meditation. Well, I thought about what am I gonna talk about? And I don't know about you, um, I want to go back to the basics of unity and how unity started. And it's with Myrtle Fillmore's healing. And right now our world is screaming, help me. I don't know what is going on in the matrix the bills in the effect on all of us 
the physical rock. Mass murders, people in political positions that probably should not be. Um, heartache, just heartache. I can't even watch the news anymore. I'm very sensitive to energy. And all I know is that I want to blame it on the surgery, you know, that, uh, but I weep a lot throughout my week. And I work in the hospice profession. So I see a lot of um, people who are supposed to be professionals, not really being professionals. So to get to the bottom line, we're going to talk about healing. Next few times I'm here, we're going to talk about healing, Christian healing. I don't know how many of you know that Myrtle Fillmore and Charles Fillmore, they were, they were seekers of the truth. And one day they walk into a meeting by E.B. Weeks, and he was a new thought minister or speaker and she took one idea from there herself. I am a child of God and I cannot inherit I come on, you're all wimpy today. Wake up. I like when people talk back to me, it feeds me. She took one and how she healed herself. And here's a question I want you to think about throughout the um, the lesson. Do you? Well, I heard something on a motivational tape by Minister Slippers all the way underneath the bed. So when you get up in the morning, you got to get on your knees. I know in unity, we don't believe in that, but I'll tell you something I do. And you know why? It's called humility. Humility before your God. He says, you say your prayers and you, your slippers will be right there. You get up and do you say, thank you, God. This is the day that you have made. Let's rejoice in it. We're pulling in that God energy all on us. That's what we need to start our day. So Myrtle, here's this one statement. And she decides that she is going to invite the presence of Jesus Christ into a chair in a quiet room, two chairs, her and one for Jesus, and meditate on that. What do you mean? I'm okay, this is my interpretation. Jesus, what do you mean? I'm a child of God. I cannot inherit disease. Well, it's true. It's true of all of us. And I probably say this every time I come here. You are more than what you are. You think you're just human. No, you are not. You are a spiritual being first. You and I and everybody on the planet, including Putin, is a child of God. And we got to call forth the Christ energy in him so that maybe his eyes will be opened. Maybe other political parties' eyes will be open. Because you know what? He's not the only one. He's not the only one. There's people in our neighborhood. There's people that go to grocery store with grocery stores with automatic guns. It's crazy. We get, bless that person, bless the family. The family has to play pay the repercussions 
of what was done. All the families that were affected that died. We have to call forth healing in our society, but first we have to call it forth within us. In Unity, the thing that I love most is, is that they teach us how to focus on our divinity instead of the sin or the disease or the lack because everything we need is already within us. Isn't that right? And it's a matter of us calling it forth going, oh yes, I am healthy, whole and complete. You know, I had to remind myself of that several times, especially when I want to go open up the refrigerator door and I, ah, with my shoulder. A simple thing as that. I could not do for myself. So I had to use my left hand. I got strength in this art. No, baby. But do you understand what I'm saying? And when I would do things like that, it was a reminder to put my hand on my shoulder and call in the presence of Jesus Christ and say, you are healing me now. You are healing me now. I was always taught by Richard Billing, say now at the end of everything. When we pray, we were taught to say thank you for answered prayer because that's demonstrating faith. It's not saying, oh, I wish so-and-so will be healed of this or so-and-so. Thank you, God, for protecting my son on that motorcycle. I would take that motorcycle, stand before it, put your hands over it, and you say the prayer of protection. Every time you see that motorcycle, every time you see your son, you pray that prayer of protection. Because you know what you're doing? You're building the energy field of protection around you and that motorcycle. You know, we don't get old in life. We get mature in life. The body may wear out and it will, it will fade away. It's a temporary thing. But the spirit of God that lives inside of us is a divine idea of, of God. It came from God. We were that idea in the mind of God. And here we are on planet Earth. And we have divine purpose to spread more good. You know, I got so much material here. I'm telling you, I don't know how I'm going to get through it in two hours. <laughs> But you know what got me started on this? I've been going through my, my, my books and I came across this little pamphlet in May Rowland. She used to run Silent Unity many, many years ago. And it, and it was, I believe in spiritual healing. So we also have an affirmation in Unity, God is good. But we need to remind ourselves that God is good all the time, even when we can't see it. It is our job to, to continuously call forth the God energy in every single situation. If we don't, how are we going to see it? If we don't say, thank you for answer prayer, how are we going to see it? When we say thank you for answered prayer, even though we don't have the results, is a demonstration of your faith to the universe, to the God of your understanding. We forgot that we are children of God, divine heirs to the kingdom. What are we doing, folks? We got to step it up a little more. Our world needs it. Let's, let's just put it down to, how about just our community? and then take it out from there. You know, one step at a time. Bless your community. You people bless those Green Bay Packers like there's no tomorrow. They're part of the community and 
May Rowland said, I believe in spiritual healing. I believe that we are essentially spiritual beings. I believe that we come alive with health, vigor, and vitality as we accept these very important words of Jesus. When your eye is sound, your whole body is full of light. If you then, if then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright. Complete, filled with light. And at the core of our being, we are light beings. We are electrons. We take ourselves down as far down as we physically can go. And we are scientifically light that is vibrating at a speed and pulling all the molecules and atoms and the fibers and the whatever else, excuse me, whatever else we have working in our body, it's light. And light heals, light restores. Light is the first thing God created. Let there be light. Are we throwing the light into our day? Are we throwing it on our path before we move out of the house? Are we inviting God in at work? God, work through me today. Let my presence be a blessing. You know, and as you're doing this, you know what's happening? You're healing yourself. Or you're healing the people that you're holding in your prayerful heart. You know, I can't remember everybody's name, everybody's prayer request, but I've told you this, shared this with you before that I put it in my prayerful heart. It's like a little purse inside of me, okay? And I just put it in there and I, and I click it and God knows who's in there and what the request is, what they need, okay? Or I take and I think silent unity and I send it off to the silent unity consciousness because remember in unity, thoughts are things, thoughts travel. I'll give you a perfect example of this. Just happened to me Friday. Get in my car, rev up the engines, ready to go. And I hear It is the biggest bumblebee I ever saw. Demonstration of thought. I looked at that little bumblebee and he, I go, settle down. And he landed on my dashboard. I opened my window and mentally I said to him or her, I do not want to kill you. The window is open. <laughs> and he walked over to the edge of the dashboard, looked at me and went out the window. All right, later on in the day, I'm driving along. Now I'm in a different, different community. Another bigger than life bumblebee. I said, you gotta be kidding. I go, God, thank you for reminding me how powerful my thoughts are. And now he's over in the right-hand corner of my car. Hold down the window. Mentally, I tell the bee, I do not want to kill you. So would you please exit out the window? Well, that one sat there for about a minute. Walked over, whoop, out, right out the window. Not once, but twice. Those bumblebees were there to remind me about my own thoughts. So what are our thoughts around maybe our illness or our finances or just our, our relationship issues, whatever's going on in your life? Whatever's going on, what needs healing? What needs to be restored? What needs to be renewed in your life? Let's go back to Myrtle. She invites the presence of Jesus Christ in the empty chair and she's across from the chair. 
She prays, she meditates, she asks Jesus to show her the way. She's asked for guidance, she's asked for healing. And it boils down to, her story boils down to the power of your words. She was born with TB, or no, she wasn't born with anything, she got TB, okay? Way back then, there was no cure. There was nothing for it. And people would say, oh, she looks so weak. She looks so pale. She's this. They talk so negatively, like they were doing her a favor. Am I right? Big talk. So what Myrtle did, and I tried to look for it, but my office space is such a mess because I decided to go through all my books couldn't find what I wanted to show. And it was the, and I'll find it, um, what she said to her body. She went and affirmed the health and the wholeness and the completeness of her body. After she went through asking every organ in her body to forgive her for accepting thoughts of negativity that weren't appropriate to the core of her being as a spiritual being. And then she reaffirmed that she was healthy, whole, and complete. It took her three years. So you people, and I've been one of them, God knows, we want this instant, spontaneous healing, like a microwave, one minute, bzz, it's done. So in God's world doesn't work like that. <laughs> work like that. God takes God's time and everything happens in the perfect time in God's world. And when we're working with the energetic laws of the universe, We got to call them in. We got to remind ourselves what this life is all about, who we're all about. I have a resident. Let me tell you. I tell her she's my hero. I got another girl in hospice. She's in her 90s. And you know, Moses, when he came down from the mountain, they said that his face was transparent, that the light just shined through him. Well, when I see this resident, guess what I see? It's transparent. And she loves to pray. Her daughter has a resale store. And this, this resident that's on our care, I asked her to pray for Sierra. Now she's in her 90s. She says, how do you spell that? She wanted the correct spelling of her name. She goes, okay, I got it. She repeated it back, said Sierra. When her, so then after I visited with her, I went over to her daughter's resale store to tell her that I visited her mom and what a delightful visit I had with her, et cetera, et cetera, okay? She said, Patty, let me tell you something. My mom has a pipeline to God. She will pray for your goddaughter and things will change, I promise you. I promise you. She says, my resale store, I started out with one um, store unit. Every day when I would come to the resale store, I once a week, I would bring my mom to go get her hair done down the little strip mall to the beauty shop. All of a sudden, every day, 
every time my mom would be there. And the days that she wasn't there, it was, and her appointment was at three o'clock, okay? And her daughter said that at 3.30, you swear, the bus stopped off in front of her store and just emptied out. Is that not crazy? Do you know how many storefronts she owns in that strip mall now? Eight. And it is a high class. Every day she said, Patty, at 3.30, the bus stops off here. And this place is packed. All eight storefronts. So she said to her mom, mom, when you go to the beauty shop, what do you do with it? She says, when they stick me under the hair dryer, I pray for your success. Is that not cool? Is that not a cool story? That's healing. That's, that's calling forth God. That's calling forth God's abundance. We are children of God and divine heirs to the kingdom. We got to believe it. Even when my residents and they're on their dying bed and they're comatose. And I tell them again, you are a child of God and you are a divine heir to the kingdom. There is nothing you have ever done wrong in your life that would make God stop loving you because God made you. It is your body that is a temporary vehicle. You're leaving it here. You don't want it. It's old. It's worn out. It's disease. And I know that you have a body, a light body inside of you that is magnificent and full of possibilities beyond our imaginations. And when you get to the other side, that is your healing. That is your healing. And God has prepared a banquet for you. Ladies and gentlemen, God has prepared us a banquet today. Let's step up to the table and claim our good. What is it you're looking for? Is it a better job? Step up to the table and say, God, you are the source of everything in my life. I ask you, guide me, direct me, inspire me to my right and perfect place to give of my talent, to give of my works with the right pay, the right people, the right benefits. God, so let's step up to the table. I'm looking for my partner in life. The perfect person I could spend the rest of my life with, God. I know there's somebody out there for me. And I know that person, there's somebody out there that's looking for me too. Can you bring us together? And we say, thank you, God, for answered prayer. That's our faith that, that it is, that, that prayer is in action now. That's like your stamp that your faith is on that prayer. That's healing, folks. We got our wounds. You know what? Clean up your hearts. You know, every day I ask God, created me a clean heart. That's my healing every day. I don't want to carry the heavy burdens that I've been carrying in my life. I got to let them go because I want to work and work every time I step out of bed. I want to be the best vessel for God to work through. I want my presence to be a blessing upon people that I come across every single day. And I want to be blessed by that. People tell me I got a squirrel in my, my garage. I said, yeah, I know. I let it live there rent free. They go, they're probably doing damages. I go, he's handicapped. Leave him alone. He is. You know, he's got one little pot and one little thing that's in hand. I go in there, give him food, water. He's happy. I'm happy. He's safe. 
garage is a mess, but you know, that's besides the point. No, 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 no. But geez, you know, it's little things like that, that, that he blesses me. I bless him, he blesses me. It's those little things in life, those blessings. Do you understand what I'm saying? We got to start shifting our energy so that the world's energy starts shifting. And you know why it's going to shift? Because we're all connected. We make that shift inside of us. You make that shift in this community. You make this shift in your home life. We're shifting the world because we're all connected. Whatever it is that's heavy on your heart, that you have a hard time forgiving yourself with, forgive it, let it go, let it go, let that person go, let that situation go, let whatever it is, if it's some corporate craziness, let it go, it is not serving the God in you, so you do not need it. And we wanna know why our backs hurt why we're on high blood pressure pills, why our stomach hurts. You know, metaphysically with my shoulder, I came to the conclusion I was carrying a lot of burden that I did not need to carry. It was time to let go. It was time to say no, and no is a complete sentence. No, I cannot do that now. No, I cannot take that on now. But I have to hand this over to Jesus. Like my brother, I have this picture of Jesus and his hands are out like this. And that photograph always reminds me of, um, come on to me or give it to me. I vision my brother in the arms of Jesus. I love my brother. He lived in Indiana. That's the point. And, he, and he's very devoted to his church. His church is very devoted to, to him. Um, you know, it makes him happy. The church makes him happy. And that's all I can ask for. You know? They did, when he was in the hospital, they did healing circles and envisioned him in the chair and sent energy to him. He's friends with this couple. And when this couple found out because they're like best friends at church, she, she got the text and they're farmers. And it sort of reminded me of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore that when Myrtle was heavy of heart and needed guidance and direction, she would run to the fields and the bell would ring and all the workers in the farm land would drop what they were doing and they'd all go in prayer because that was a sign that Myrtle was in prayer. Isn't that interesting? And when my brother was telling me this story on the phone, I could not stop sobbing. I believe all religions are right. I believe they're all right. You know, they're all right for whoever's going there. That's where they're at in life. I don't think I got the perfect religion. So I can't think that they have the perfect religion. You know what? As long as you believe in God, you have the perfect religion. And you work with God every day, you have the perfect religion. You believe in God, you have the perfect religion. You build your relationship with God, you have the perfect God, a religion. So she called him up and she said, Rich, when I heard the news, I dropped what I was doing and I ran to the field where our cross is in the middle of the field where all the crops are going. She goes, I fell at the bottom of the cross on my knees. 
And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that Jesus takes this away from me. Her husband comes home. She tells her husband what's going on. And what do you think he did? He ran to the field, dropped to his knees, and asked Jesus to take it away from my dad. I think that's pretty powerful. Healing is here. Each and every one of us is a healer. Each and every one of us is a healer. Are you making a relationship with the healer of God inside of you? Are you allowing that healing energy to come through you? I can't wait to talk to him after church. They have a huge healing circle. He's going to be put in the midst of it. Can you imagine the energy? This is a huge church. There's like three in Indiana. <laughs> There's hope for us. <laughs> but to hear what his experience is, they're not sure what kind of cancer it is yet. But on Monday, they they should know. But that's what we have to do. Use that power of your imagination. It's a gift. It's part of your inheritance. Visualize. Visualize. Einstein said visualization is more powerful than knowledge. Now, you all might think I'm crazy. And you're right. I am. I like that that one. And I'm just going to close with this. I went into a community that was locked down in isolation because they had 16 cases of COVID. So I went to the nurse's office. I talked with the nurse and I said, listen, I'm just going to pray over the building, pray for you guys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm thinking to myself, how is Jesus Christ is in this place? And I am not lying to you. I walked down the hallway where some of the rooms were. In front of each door was the presence. I saw the presence of Jesus Christ. And I reached out. Now my ego right away wanted to say, you know something. And the spiritual part of me said, oh, yes, you do. Don't let that ego tell you anything. The presence of Jesus is protecting those rows of your feet. And do not. We are powerful beyond measure. When you pray, pray with authority. God gave you that authority. Say thank you, God, for answering prayer. As you're driving throughout the day, thank God for whatever you see. Bless everything that you see. Because God gave it to all of us as a gift. So let us pray. Time for meditation, right? Now, when we pray and we meditate, just take in a deep breath and exhale out because what I've given, or what spirit, I didn't give you anything, spirit gave it to you. What spirit has given to you today, it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to process. Breathe in and exhale out any heaviness that you may have. Don't worry, God will explain it all to you. Pieces of the puzzle of 
light will come to you. Just trust. Just trust. And as you breathe in, breathe in, I am. As you exhale, at one. I am at one with God. Ride that phrase like a wave. I am at one with God. I am that. I am healthy. Whole and complete. I am lovable. I am. I am love. I am the divine expression of God. I now put myself out to shine. Let my light shine. Visualize yourself as a luminous being right now. That a luminous being will come to you. It wants to express more of itself. And I am willing, I am willing to let go. Whatever is standing in the way. To be expressing more of my eyes. Let go of those moments. And let go of those eyes. I am healthy and whole. I am deeply I deeply love. Love is what I am. I am a child of God. I am a divine heir to the kingdom. I am that I am. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for answering me. You know me intimately. You've been with me with every breath I've ever taken in this life. I surrender myself unto you. Restore me. Restore my consciousness to the Christ consciousness. Bigger and better things ever I say thank you, God. Welcome. 
let's say are often clear. There is no lack or limitation. Really, I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. And let's welcome Julie <laughs> and Linda. Thank you, that was very inspirational. Yes, this song, uh, was written by Reverend Meg Barbhouse, and she was inspired by Julian of Norwich, who um, is Norwich, England. She, she was in the Middle Ages. Quite uh, interesting situation. They only found her writings in early 1900s. And uh, she was known for something called Revelations of Divine Love. And um, one of her she said, all shall be well. That was the message she was getting. So that's what this one is built around, but sometimes we forget, so. I said, Julian, you are holding, you are holding my hand. I said, Julian, you are holding, you are holding my hand. She said, all will be well. All will be well, all manner of things will be well. I said, Julian, do you not know, do you not know about sorrow? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about pain? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about hunger? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about shame? She said, all will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. So I said, Julian, do you not know, do you not know about loneliness? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about disease? Julian, do you not know, do you not know about cruelty? Julian, it's too much, it brought me to my knees. She said, all will be well. All will be well, all manner of things will be well. She said, no one does not know, not know about sorrow. No one does not know, does not know about pain. She said, no one does not know, does not know about hunger. No one does not know, not know about shame. She said, all will be well. All will be well, all manner of things will be well. She said, all will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Ooh. Let's bring our tights up, please, for a quick blessing or a long blessing. Be quick. Let's all take a, a second again and let's gather ourselves and let's bless these pies that have been up to us. We thank all, all the hands that have toiled to bring these pies forward to us. And we truly are blessed and giving. And unity is truly blessed and received. Thank you, God. And it's always a surprise when the slide changes. Today's announcements. Here we go. The book study club happens Thursdays at 930. It can be in person or virtual. 
if you're interested in it, you can call the office, email, let one of us know, and we'll make sure you get the invitation for that. It is a marvelous book, What Happened to You. Silent Unity Prayer follows that again every Thursday at 11. That can also be in person or virtual. If you're not, if you are interested in it, um, don't be shy. You can come and be in person and again. Let us know and we'll make sure you get that invitation. Course in Miracles will be with our own Joanne back there. Hi, Joanne. Um, and that starts um, every Sunday, 1145-ish, kind of after we've had a little break in between things. And, oh, our website, it's been, it's been spiffed up a bit, guys, go on out there. We have a bulletin board, we have an inspiring insights that ch changes every few weeks or so. Um, we have guided uh, meditations and different, on the classes tab, and you can also go ahead and see um, past Sunday's um, services. So if you have a, a message that you'd like to hear it again, um, you'll be able to go ahead and find that. We have our life journey group meeting the second and fourth Mondays at 6.30 to 8.15. It's a wonderful thing as well. Come share. Clean in Green Day. This is going to be held in Daffodil Park in Greentail. And not that we're just going to support one community. We support them all. However, our very own Kevin and Susan Larkin will be there to um, entertain and have some fun with everybody. So lots of things to do uh, May 21st from 9 to 11. Um, May 22nd, we will have another quick meeting after service, right, Kevin? Directly after service, yes? And we'll be uh, voting and bringing in our new board members. So please plan on taking a few minutes and I that's next week. Okay, great. We still need volunteers. We need volunteers for everything, watering the plants. I know this is everybody's favorite, mowing the lawn. Enough people volunteer. We only have to do it once a month for just the cutting season so we can get that done. Kitchen help, garden help, um, make sure the papers get filled in the, in the pews help, any kind of help. It all needs to still happen. Please let Diane know. Diane, raise your hand. Thank you. Let me know, let Kevin know, let, let what any of the board members go ahead and know. And our favorite thing, Friendship and Potluck, Sunday's coming back, and that will be on the 29th. So again, bring a dish to share. That'll be um, immediately after service. Whatever you bring, make sure it's ready to serve, right? Don't drop it off in the kitchen and think somebody's going to slice and dice it for you. Um, it, we, we, we don't have good knives anyway, but just bring, bring it. Bring anything, anything you love to serve. It, it, it's all appreciated and loved. Okay, let's all go ahead and stand. And um, if you're comfortable holding hands, let's make our circle. If you're not comfortable, that's okay too. Just uh, you can put hands on shoulders or, or whatnot. Thank you. 